This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The living God is present with us in this place. The living God is present with us at this time. So draw near in faith, in humility, in devotion, and in expectation. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, make us attentive to your spirit today, that we may hear what we ought to hear and be led in the ways we ought to be led, all for the sake of your glory. Amen. As we begin, uh, uh, we ran out of bulletins apparently this morning. We'll have to have uh, Kara run some more for the next, next few weeks. If somebody has one that they can share, please raise your hand. And uh, there we go. Very good. That's all I see right now, somebody looking for one. If you happen to turn around and see somebody else walk in, it's going to... Speaking of the bulletin, the announcements for the coming week are in the bulletin. It's, it's um, frankly just a little embarrassing because most of them are about Cheryl and me. And uh, we too have never wanted it to be about us. Um, but we're grateful. Um, more grateful than we can begin to say um, about all that you are doing for us and we are uh, looking forward to these uh, remaining times with you um, and hope that you are, are able to attend. The name of the interim pastor who will begin uh, sometime in the middle of August will be announced in worship next Sunday, and then in some follow-up mailings after that, just as a way of, of some teaching. In the United Church of Christ, in our denomination, only permanent pastors are voted on by the congregation. I was voted on by the congregation in, uh, at a duly called congregational meeting in 1991. The permanent pastor to follow me will be voted on at a duly called congregational meeting by the congregation. Interim pastors, because that's kind of a specialty, um, interim pastors are selected by church councils or whatever a congregation calls its governing body. Interim pastors are selected by church councils um, in cooperation with the association of which a church is a part. In our case, the Southwest Wisconsin Association of the United Church of Christ. Interims aren't assigned to a church so much, but they're recommended to a church. Given what the association knows about the life situation of the congregation at the present time. And from the pool of available interims, the association makes a recommendation and then the council uh, works with that person and, and well, anyway, the um, person recommended to us by the association, to you, um, and selected by the church council will be announced in worship next week. So be on the edge of your seat for that. You will note that in worship today, congregational singing is returning. And I'm so very glad about that. Um, but it's returning in a limited way. Um, we aren't going to be singing every verse of every hymn, but uh, all told, during the course of today's worship service, we will be singing the equivalent of a hymn. Uh, and just as a, as a way of starting small and, and, and growing. So, um, be, be paying attention to which uh, verses that we're singing today. 
As for the notes, do what I do, whatever, whatever note comes out is fine. <clears throat> Sarah Punt has some announcements that she would like to make for us this morning. Good morning. As we are re-entering into our time of gathering together and having in-person programs, I have a few announcements. Uh, while I'm talking about VBS, I would like to invite Lars to come up and join me for the youth announcement. Uh, Vacation Bible School at Salem is for all ages. So we have programs for adults, youth, and younger children. And there are registration forms in the back. I had put a deadline of July 15th on the registration request. Now, I hope all of you know by now that that's a date arbitrarily set by me to encourage people to get their forms in so that we have a general idea of numbers. If you still want to participate, we are not going to turn you away. Um, so please feel free to review the registration information on the back table if you'd like to volunteer or make a contribution of some kind. Uh, that information is back there as well. Please feel free to send me an email to ask any questions. Also, for Vacation Bible School, we usually do a mission project. And this year, Badger Prairie Needs Network had reached out to us that they need birthday kits. Uh, we provided I think it was something like 32 birthday kits a couple of years ago when we did this at Vacation Bible School. The thing that surprises me is BPNN gives out 200 kits a month for children that otherwise would not be able to have a birthday cake. Uh, the information um, on the, is on the back table. It has a list of exactly what we need. If you only want to purchase one item and not purchase everything for a kit, that's fine. We will assemble them or give the items separately. We will be collecting these items until the end of Vacation Bible School on August 17th, I think is the last day. Now, for the garden, Lars has been the youth this week with his parents uh, tending to the Salem Youth Garden. The youth have a plot in the Salem Garden this year, and it is really doing quite well, which is exciting. They, we have eight youth who have helped plant it, and they're all taking turns over the summer tending it. We are donating fresh produce to BPNN on a weekly basis, and we are also offering our produce here at church for members of Salem who might not be able to have a garden at home. The produce that Lars and his mom picked this week is out on a table in the lobby, and we are accepting free will donations. It's not required if you would like to take food and you don't want to make a donation, that's fine. Just know that all proceeds will go directly to Badger Prairie Needs Network to support their ministries. That's it for today, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Are there other announcements to share today? I'm seeing none, then Dawn will lead us into worship with our morning prelude.
Well, would you join me, please, in a responsive call to worship? Let us worship God. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, the word of God our guide, the spirit of God our teacher, and the glory of God our goal. Let us glorify God with singing. At long last, let us glorify God with singing. join me please in a prayer of confession. Only God, who loves to hear the singer's tune, whether on pitch or not, we pray this verse from one of the Bible's songs. May we put our hearts into it and all the faith we have at our disposal today. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there be any hurtful way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The good news of the gospel declared through Jesus Christ our Lord is that God forgives your sin and pardons you of all unrighteousness, even those sins unbeknownst to you. So live in now in the love of God and strive to show that love to others each and every day. Thanks and praise be to God. Amen. You may please be seated. I would like to invite Anna Putney to come forward so we can celebrate her upon her graduation. While she's making her way up here, I would like to call your attention to the bulletin insert. Uh, we acknowledged Avery last week, and we are acknowledging Anna today. Both of them are very busy, dedicated young people who are usually out in the community making a difference. And to get them both here on the same day was impossible this summer. So um, despite COVID, they have remained very busy. For those of you that were here last week, my remarks are going to seem very similar. I didn't want to rewrite them because I wanted to make sure that Anna heard what I had to say with regards to moving forward with her journey. So over the last 18 months, we've repeatedly talked about how things are different and forever changed. And this statement is very true, but it's really not unique to the past year and a half. Every year at Salem, we honor our graduating seniors. When my son graduated six years ago, 
Salem had the tradition to have a celebration of graduates on the morning of graduation. And it was a celebration where grandparents were usually in town and the whole family would come to church and then they would go have some brunch and then head to graduation. Then the school district uh, changed the time of graduation. So we had to adapt. And three years ago when my daughter graduated, we started having Senior Sunday or graduate recognition the week before graduation as a way to honor them, but allow their families to get to the graduation service on time. Then came last year, and I see that Morgan is here, and last year we had to adapt yet again, and we had to have an outdoor parking lot celebration, which I think all of us really enjoyed, and uh, yeah, she's nodding her head. It was very memorable. Um, but it's important to see how we've adapted over time. So my point in this walk down memory lane is to highlight that every year we may do things differently. We need to adapt, circumstances change, and the traditions of how we acknowledge our seniors might change. But our core intentions are always the same. No matter where life takes you, Anna, and no matter what unexpected detours you experience, stay true to your core values and identity. Likewise, we at Salem will always be here for you. And our message will always be the same, that we love you, God loves you, and you always have a home here with us. Anna, you have been part of this community since the day you were born. At your baptism, we promised our love, support, and care to you and your family. At your confirmation, we welcomed you as a full adult participant in the life of the church. Now these promises come full circle, and we want to honor you as you transition from our care at Salem into your new and exciting future. We celebrate you at this pivotal moment in your life and offer thanksgiving for the unique God-given gifts you have shared in our presence. You live out your faith in your role as a CNA at the New Glarus Home. And I am sure you will exemplify these same Christian values as you pursue your nursing degree at St. Olaf. It has truly been a privilege to watch you grow into the young adult you are today, and we are proud of you for all that you have accomplished. But more importantly, we are proud of you for who you are. You have been a blessing to us, and we now send you forth with confidence into the world. You are receiving a copy of the Common English Bible Student Edition. The youth ministry team chose this Bible because of the real life applications it, it applies to its interpretation of scripture. It may help you get through some of those required religion classes at St. Olaf. It's not the official student Bible that they'll have you use, but it might have some little cheats in the margins to help you. Please keep this Bible as a reminder of your faith beginnings with us and refer to it often, especially through life's twists and turns and ups and downs. Use this Bible and your faith as the rock upon which you build your house no matter where you go. And may God bless you and keep you all the days of your life. Congratulations. As we come to our time of prayer, we certainly want to remember Anna and ask God's blessings upon her as she begins her studies at St. Olaf in Minnesota. Also want to hold in prayer, continue to hold in prayer, Virginia Witt. Uh, last Sunday, we announced that Virginia was hospitalized following a fall or some falls uh, at her home. Uh, Virginia is now a resident at Ingleside Nursing Home in Mount Horeb, um, at least for a period of time. Uh, so we want to uh, hold um, Virginia in our prayers. 
And Virginia's granddaughter, Chrissy, also asked that we hold Virginia's daughter, Kathy, wit in our prayers, too. Uh, mostly because, uh, you know, Kathy is worried about her mother. And Kathy lives uh, uh, way up in, uh, I think, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, and so we want to hold her in prayer as well. And then Cindy Remus wishes us to uh, keep in prayer her brother Warner. Uh, Warner had uh, transplant surgery a while back and maybe had a, a bit of a setback recently, but Cindy would like us to hold Warner in prayer. Are there other prayer requests to mention today? Let's turn to God in prayer. Still speaking, God. We pause to hear your voice. Your voice for our individual lives and your voice for this congregation at this time in its life. Speak to reassure us to hasten or control. Speak to make yourself known today and to guide us tomorrow. Speak to help us become attuned to your voice so that we can recognize your authentic word above the storms of passion or the murmurs of self-will, amid the sounds of violence and anger and fear and worries and anxieties and insecurities that are such a din in our world, in our nation, and in our lives. Speak to Anna, to Warner, to Virginia, to Kathy, that word that that you long to speak to them and which they long to hear. We place this congregation in your care at this time of transition. You have blessed this fellowship since its founding in 1923, and there's no reason to believe you will stop that now. All we have needed in the past, you have supplied, together with strength for today. So we trust that you will offer bright hope for tomorrow. Help us to trust you in all things, so that it can be said of us we have no anxiety about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving we make our request known to God. You must certainly be grappling with the world now, O oh Lord. Floods in Europe and assassination in Haiti, shootings in this country, temperatures rising all over, and all kinds of political conniving and maneuvering. Grant us a Bible-shaped faith, born of the Spirit, the kind prayed by one of the psalmists who was sure God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of need. Bring us to that awareness. As we say now in the name of Jesus, who taught all disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the 12th chapter of Paul's letter to Rome. Now, Paul was a man of faith. Paul was a theologian, a writer, and a pastor. And throughout it all, Paul was a person who had a heart for the church, a love for the church. And at various times in his letters, he expressed to those congregations his hopes for them. And here is one of those times, one of those expressions of Paul's hope for, in this case, the Church of Rome. But it's Paul's hope for the church through all time. Listen along with me for the word of God from Romans 12, verses 9 to the end of the chapter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves but leave room for the wrath of God. For it's written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May this word of old enrich us today with light with hope and with faith. Amen. How the rafters love to hear you again. We begin today in earnest the work of closing out my pastorate here in Verona. So starting today I'm bringing you one more sermon series. 
after decades of inflicting you with sermon series, here's one more. Today I am starting a um, farewell sermon that will come in three installments. My topic today, as you can see in the bulletin, is my hope for Salem's future. Next week the theme will be how to welcome your new pastor. And two weeks from day, today, I will sing for you <laughs> my song of grateful praise. Today, my hopes for Salem and its future. Of course you know, I hope you do, that it is uh, wrong for me, um, it's not right for me, to um, propose any ministry initiatives that I think you should be beginning. It's wrong for me to suggest any programs you ought to be developing and conducting. It's not my place to do that. And it would be wrong of me if I tried to do that. Yet, nevertheless, it's appropriate for me to share with you some hopes that I have for this congregation. This congregation that has been uh, so much at the center of my life and my family's life uh, for these decades. And I have four hopes that I want to name for you today. The first is this. Remember your history. Remember your history. An old time missionary, way back in the 18th century, said something that the Christian ages have not forgotten since he said it. And what he said was this, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Now that's not just a quotation from old, that is this congregation's living history. In the 1930s, the early 1930s, in the middle of the Great Depression, and right before Christmas no less, in the middle of the Depression and right before Christmas, this congregation voted to purchase that little white church, furnishings and all, that they had been renting. That little white church that stood then on the corner of Church Street and Main Street where Miller's parking lot and their sign now is. In the Great Depression right before Christmas. Let's buy a church. Roughly 30 years after that, this congregation decided to purchase this property, four acres, outside of town. That outside of town and build a building much larger than they needed. In the 1970s, when the wounds of the Vietnam War were still quite strong, this congregation voted to sponsor and support here in Verona a refugee family from Vietnam until they could get their feet on the ground in this country. A little over 10 years ago, in 2010, the country was still feeling the effects of the economic 
downturn that was 2008, this congregation saw the need to make this building handicapped accessible. And it voted to begin a capital campaign to raise the astonishing amount of over a million dollars and to hire a consultant whose fee seemed exorbitant. We didn't know if we could do it, but here we are. Four years ago, this congregation decided, now that we have the building outwardly and visibly accessible to all, let's do the moral thing and vote to become open and affirming so that we are spiritually open to all. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. That's not just a quotation from a missionary in the 1790s. That's the living history of this congregation. And that's the history I want you to remember and to be encouraged by. Whenever, as you surely will, whenever you come up against the next daunting task, the next difficult decision, the thing that you don't think you can do, but be ready to take to it, setting big goals, all in a hope-filled courage, trusting that God will bless you then as God has blessed you in the past. Remember your history. That's my first hope for you. My second hope for you is this, that you will be at peace with one another. Congregations, this may come as a surprise to you, <laughs> congregations have some of the dynamics of families. And it is an understatement, of course, to say that everybody in the same household always agrees about everything. I'm sure that's not the case in your house. Tame subjects can quickly become testy situations and touchy. Discussions around, oh what? Well, discussions around when the Christmas tree should come down or at what temperature the thermostat should be set can get a little dodgy in some places. And it's no different in congregations. Congregations have the same dynamic. Before I started as the pastor here in 1991, my, the first church I served was in Belvedere, Illinois. I was there for nine years. That congregation was founded in 1901, and they built their first building in 1908. It was a congregation of what was then known as the German Evangelical Synod of North America. And all of its records, right up until the start of World War I, all of its records were kept in German. The church wanted to have those translated so that they could learn what, what they said. And, and so we did. And we all laughed when we read the entry by Reverend Edward Pinkert, who happened to be the minister at the time the new building was planned and built in 1908. I don't know if Reverend Pinkert was chuckling when he said this, if he was thankful that he was leaving when he said this, uh, or if he just shook his head when he said this. But what he wrote was, in the process of that planning a new building and building it, we discovered many people make for many opinions. So it is in the church. 
and it won't be any different here. In fact, it may accentuate among you in the near term. Some may be looking at the horizon and, 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 and ready to, to embrace the change, almost racing to it. Others will be more hesitant and, 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 and want to, to hold to the past, to what's been enjoyed. Others won't be sure what to do. They'll be, they'll be caught between the two. They'll be, they'll be torn as to which path is the right one to take. My hope for you is that through all of that, you will maintain an attitude of peace with one another. Don't be afraid of conflict. Good things can grow out of conflict. Don't be afraid of conflict, but don't become conflicted. Don't be afraid of disagreement, but don't become disagreeable toward one another. Juggle difference without becoming divided. Some of you will remember Chris Richards. Chris invited me to his home one afternoon, and he told me that he was dying. And at one point, in, in, in typical Chris fashion, it could only be the way, way Chris would have said it, he chuckled and said, well, at least I can know that my three kids won't argue about who gets what of my stuff. Then he paused ever so slightly and started laughing harder and said, they'll probably argue about who has to take my junk. I repeatedly tell our kids, our three kids, if there ever comes a day when they're throwing rocks at each other, if there ever comes a day when they're not getting along, when they're divided over something, when one is not speaking to another, I'm going to come back and haunt them until they straighten up and work things out. I'm telling you the same thing. If there ever comes a day when you become so divided as a congregation that this side isn't speaking to that side, when you're beating each other over the head with this or that, I'm going to come back and haunt you, and Jesus is going to let me. And not only that, I'm going to bring Zane Pouts and Herman Lehman and Walter Clausing along with me, and we'll all get after you. Be at peace with one another. Remember your history, and be at peace with one another. The third hope I have for you is this. Have realistic expectations. Have realistic expectations. Not every congregation has realistic expectations, and, that, that, and that's, that's their downfall. As an example of a congregation with unrealistic expectations, I had the opportunity not long ago to read the congregational profile of another church in our association, not, not all that far away. A congregational profile, by the way, is a, a form, a multi-page document, um, kind of a resume of the church that offers a description of the church, its history, its uh, structure, um, its financial state, you know, everything about the church. It's a resume of the church. And um, somebody, I've never actually been around when one of these have been written, somebody will lead you through that. And Salem will, will uh, uh, put together a congregational profile, and that's what will be used nationally uh, to search for uh, my replacement as a permanent pastor. Well, this uh, congregational profile that I had the occasion to read not long ago was of a church that said they want to grow. They want their pastor to bring in new members, especially children and youth 
and young families. Church also recognizes that it's an aging congregation with many of its people being quite elderly, and they want their pastor to look in and look after their shut-ins on a regular basis and to see to them. And the kicker is that they want the pastor to do all of this on three-quarters time. Translate that to mean they want full-time work at part-time pay. There's much wrong with that congregation's expectations. No pastor can do all that on a part-time basis. There simply isn't time. No time to do that plus put together worship services that are worthy of the name. No pastor can do all that on a full-time basis. There, there still isn't time. And what's more important, no pastor, though no pastor should be aloof from those things. No pastor should be expected to do all those things alone. Pastors aren't supposed to be the church and do the work of the church. The congregation, the congregation needs to be the church and do the work of the church, which includes reaching out to newcomers and caring uh, for current members. So have realistic expectations. Bear that in mind as you think about the time ahead. Remember your history. Be at peace with one another. Have realistic expectations. And now this fourth. Seek the kingdom of God. I hope that you always seek the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God isn't some Shangri-La that comes at the end of time it isn't some sanctuary to escape from the world in the midst of this world. That's not what the kingdom of God is either. The kingdom of God is the rule of God in human hearts, beginning with yours. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the rule of God in your own heart and in the heart of the church. Another way to say this is to keep Christ Keep Christ always in view. Make it your aim to please him. Make it your goal to serve him. Let Christ be your focus all times and let him be the measure of your success or failure. Not any fad or any kind of latest thing, but Christ. Remember that page in the New Testament that tells about when, when Peter was walking on the water. You may remember the scene. The disciples were by themselves in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. The waves were rough. The wind was against them. And it was night. And they were afraid. And then come close to the dawn. Close to the dawn, Jesus came to them walking on the water. And Peter asked, Peter, he was always the boldest one of the bunch. Peter asked if he could come out of the boat and walk on the water too, and Jesus invited him. And Peter did all right. He was walking on the water until, until he took his eyes off Jesus. And the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. A real congregational life Real congregational mission and effectiveness takes place outside the safety of the boat. It calls for standing in the waves, in the turbulence of the times, in the world, all at the invitation of Christ, with a focus on Christ. And if you have your focus on Christ, it doesn't matter how strong the wind it doesn't matter how dark the night. It doesn't matter how rough the waves. It doesn't matter how rocky the boat. As long as your focus is on Jesus, having him as your model and your example and your priority, then power and purpose and productivity and peace will be yours. Seek the kingdom of God by keeping your focus on Jesus. Well, next week, 
Uh, my theme will be how to welcome your new pastor. For today, these are four of my hopes for this congregation in the months and years to come. Remember your history. Be at peace with one another. Have realistic expectations. And seek the kingdom of God by keeping your focus on Jesus. If you do that, if you do that, you will be a welcome sight to any new pastor, just as you were and have been to Cheryl and to me. Let us pray. Bless Salem United Church of Christ, O God, with your heavenly benediction and peace. We know that you will keep these people in your care, in the palm of your hand, and under your watchful eye. May they always do the same with you, keeping their focus on Jesus and on the kingdom he come to bring. Amen.